You know, I'm not a fan of pyramids for more than one reason. They seem to be everywhere in every company's logo, car emblems on the dollar bill, but I'll try to stay focused for this video. Uh, so in 1992, the USDA came out with what they called the Food Guide Pyramid. Ironically, I was born in 1992 to save the day. And this doesn't really have anything to do with dietary recommendations, what humans need to be optimally healthy. It corresponded directly to the United States agricultural production, what the farmers were making. So if people ate these foods in this ratio, then big ag would make an, you know, the amount of money they're supposed to. They wouldn't have overproduction or underproduction of any food. And this was from 92 through, I believe, 2005. So they have changed things more recently. And if you look up different countries, depending on what that country produced, will dictate what their dietary recommendations were. And now we know everyone's moving towards like the new world order, plant-based, eat your bugs diet. Uh, but we have fats, oils, and sweets used sparingly, basically scare people away. Two to three servings of various dairy products, two to three servings of meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and beans and nuts are in that category, which doesn't make much sense. Three to five servings of vegetables, two to four servings of fruit, and six to 11 servings of bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. Now, to be fair, if you ate all organic, high quality versions of all of these foods, you would probably still be healthy. I, I mean, it's certainly not good for children because there is a lack of animal protein. Maybe in middle age to older people that don't have as high of a protein requirement, they're not as active. This might have actually passed. But when you consider that, you know, the average person is eating bagels, sandwiches, pasta, pizza, hamburgers for three meals of the day, <laughs> these ratios actually correspond to the standard American diet in a very negative connotation. And, you know, if the foods, as I said, weren't full of all of those agrochemicals, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, if our water, if our air wasn't so polluted, if they weren't using oxidized vegetable seed oils and all the pastries and all the grains, we might be okay. But unfortunately, the lack of food quality has caused issues. So if we do increase the food quality and are sourcing local, organic, the best we can find, the ratios do slightly change. So uh, this is mainly for already grown adults. In a child, uh, you would probably reduce the amount of plant foods and increase the amount of animal foods, uh, depending on their appetite. Uh, the big brain pyramid, uh, although I'm inclined to believe I'm not the most intelligent nutrition person out there, I am definitely the only honest one. So I'm the best you got on YouTube, unfortunately. And, and this is, again, what I've devised after, you know, being on diets basically my whole adult life. So less than 5% of cheat meals, you know, going out to restaurants, eating non-organic food, eating food that doesn't agree with your stomach, you keep it less than 5%, you should be good to go. That's, you know, probably a cheat meal once a week, every two weeks, as long as you're not doing a whole cheat day. 5% veggies, 5% fruits, you know, that you tolerate well, that uh, you know, are high quality, that you're eating for flavor and taste, not for actual caloric density. And 5% of calories can actually be quite a bit for each of those. So for veggies, I might actually a bit less than that. For fruits, depending on how you tolerate them, it could be more. 5 to 15% dairy and 10 to 20% animal protein. And by that, I mean 20% total between both of those. So if you do tolerate dairy, this could actually be 0% then you can incorporate it into your diet, or if not, stick to just animal protein, mainly you know, grass-fed beef is ideal because getting pork and chicken is difficult to do. And, and that's where you're gonna be getting a lot of your B vitamins, obviously the protein, and especially in children, those would be increased because you want your child to grow and be as developed as possible. You know, we could break this down more into what types of dairy products have certain vitamins, but for the most part, if everything's high quality, and you stick to 20% of your calories coming from either dairy or meat, that's going to be plenty adequate for the average person. And then we have the majority of the energy in the diet. So we have you know, about 15% of our energy coming from veggies, fruits, and cheat meals, and then plus 65% is going to be 80% of total energy, which is what you want. 
You want 80% of your calories coming from carbohydrates or fats or alcohol, and then 20% from protein, which is what this pyramid equates to. If you have a higher lean body mass, might need more protein. And depending on your ancestry, your current health status, it's going to be a balance of plant carbohydrates and animal fats, and possibly not even animal fats, possibly plant fats. Like the diet I'm following now for liver damage is mostly plant-based carbohydrates, organic grains with a small amount of coconut oil and coconut fats. In, a, in an ideally healthy person, uh, you can look at like the indigenous Swiss people in uh, Weston Price's book that were having rye bread with cheese for breakfast, milk, a lot of grain carbohydrates, a lot of dairy fat. And that is definitely one way to do it. But, you know, due to modern health issues and most people not following an ideal diet most of their lives, nutrition isn't really balanced enough for people to consume, you know, super high animal fat meals with super high carbohydrate meals. There has to be a, a decent amount of critiquing and balancing, including a supplement regimen for at least a couple months to a couple years before you can just comfortably eat high quality foods. Uh, so I would say... Granted, the person has developed properly, doesn't have any severe imbalances, mainly a vitamin D deficiency, then you could probably jump right into a diet like this and not have to really worry about anything. And if you did have access to a variety of these high quality foods, you know, you're going to the farmer's market every week, you're getting high quality grains, you're going by your appetite, what you naturally want to eat will fall in line with this, what your cravings are. But if the foods aren't high quality, the vitamin and mineral content of that food isn't going to be enough to kind of satisfy your craving. It's why people tend to just crave the same foods over and over and over again and then the craving doesn't go away. Now, if you're craving chocolate, it, it could take you months to years of eating chocolate to fix a magnesium deficiency. So you have to understand why you're craving certain things. You wanna see changes in your dietary patterns every few weeks, every few months based on your body's nutritional stores. Maybe after you eat a lot of white pasta, your body starts craving steak because it needs B vitamins to process uh, those carbohydrates. Maybe after you eat a lot of veggies, a lot of fruits, your body starts craving vitamin K2 because you don't have a lot of fermented foods in your diet. So it's definitely important to pay attention, see what you're craving. And a lot of people won't feel the need for cheat meals, but another thing I'm implying with cheat meals is you know higher caloric density foods you know, if you do have a higher lean body mass, if you have a hard time gaining or maintaining your weight, then you might have to put things in your diet that aren't really considered natural that you know, most people don't think you should be eating, like a, an organic candy bar or organic cookies. The caloric density of sugar plus fat plus grains isn't needed in most contexts. However, it can be um, a good addition for some people. Now, surprisingly, there's not that much of a switch when you look at these side by side. We're just swapping the vegetables and the fruits with the animal protein in the milk, just increasing the overall amount of animal nutrition and vitamins in the diet. And we're making sure that in certain contexts that you do have animal fats as opposed to just eating large amounts of refined carbohydrates. But either way, if the food quality in the diet is incredibly high, you would really be good on either of these, but the only thing that's overlooked is a, a children's diet where they need more animal fats, more animal protein in order to grow and develop. Uh, in which this case, much better option here. And even, as I said earlier, reduce the veggies, reduce the fruits, reduce the plant carbohydrates in a child's diet. So that's gonna be it for today, guys. A little bit shorter than my normal whiteboard videos. Someone suggested this a while ago and I didn't really feel like writing a script today, so I just Kind of did this off the top of my head, so uh, if you guys can please go to frank com to support me through all of my businesses before I completely lose my mind. Uh, you can also drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, uh, subscribe so that YouTube unsubscribes you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, please share this on any social media you have access to. But thanks again for joining me, guys and I will see you for tomorrow.